Okay, I'll ask for four right. Over 48, county five, phone company 737. Six and a half miles ahead, wind 050 at one six, go two three, runway four right, quarter line. The most important part of any safe flight is a thorough and complete pre-flight inspection. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to pre-flight a Cessna 172N model like we have here at Indiana Flight Center. Now, if we open the POH, we see that the pre-flight follows a standard pattern. We'll start in the cockpit, go to the tail, then the right wing, then the nose, and we'll finish at the left wing. We'll start in the cockpit. First, remove the gust lock so that the controls can move freely. Next, turn the master switch on. You should hear the gyros spin up. When you do turn the master switch on, check the fuel quantity gauges, and remember you've got 20 gallons usable in each tank. Put the flaps down. This is an uncessness checklist, but we think it's important to check the flaps while they're in the down position so that you can see everything clearly. Outside, the flaps should move evenly and together. Once they're all the way down, they should be at the same level on both sides. Turn off the master switch. Outside the airplane, make sure the baggage compartment is closed and locked. We always like to have it locked just to prevent any in-flight opening of the door. Now for the tail. Check that the tail is not tied down. Check the elevator movement fully through on both sides and double check the rudder movement also just to make sure there's no binding in any of the controls. At the wing, double check the ailerons move smoothly and opposite one another. When you check the push rod, be sure to hold the aileron up with your other hand. If the wind catches it, it can pinch your hands between. At the flap, we want to check that the flap is stiff in place, that the tracks are clear, and that the push rod has a little bit of roll movement side to side, but none forward and back. Check the wheel for tread and general condition. Look for any nicks or cracks. Check the brakes and make sure there's no hydraulic fluid leaking. Check the oil. The level should be between 4 and 5 quarts. At the nose, check the propeller, looking for nicks or dents in the propeller blades. When you're done, check the alternator belt just inside the cowl. Check that the landing light is clear and not broken, and that the carburetor intake is clear. At the nose wheel, check for general tire condition, inflation, and there should be about three fingers on the strut. Check that the static port is open and not blocked. The inspection of the left wing repeats all of the things on the right wing with regard to the aileron, flaps, and gear, with a few notable exceptions that are only on the left wing, starting with the pitot tube. We want to check that the hole in the front and in the back is open and clear for airspeed indication. The left wing also has the fuel tank vent. This should be open and not blocked. Check that the stall warning vane is clear and not blocked by debris. This airplane has three fuel sumps, one on each wing and another in the nose. Take a small sample of fuel and hold it up to the light. There should be no water or sediment in the fuel. Now we're going to manually check the fuel level, and we'll do this for both sides. Grab the handle and step on the step. Carefully lift yourself onto the airplane using the third step to balance yourself. Go ahead and insert the graduated tube into the tank until it touches the bottom of the tank. Don't drop it. Place your finger over the tube and lift it out reading the mark at the graduated line. After you're done, drop the fuel back in and go ahead and replace the cap. Be sure to check both sides and after that you should be all set to go flying. Thank you for watching IFC TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at indianaflightcenter.com to sign up for our monthly newsletter. We'll see you next time.